So with recent news about the Bleach anime finally returning in 2021, which is this year, I want to go over the final arc, which is the Thousand Year Blood War saga, in which Juma Buck along with the rest of the Quincy's were the main enemies. Now this arc definitely has its moments, and there are plenty of great things, like the character arcs being resolved, um, that were set up since the beginning of the series, and also weren't really answered until this saga. So, we had stuff like Ichigo's past being revealed, that means his heritage, and also what really happened to his mother, like all these plot twists that came out in this saga, and also Ichibe fighting against Juha Bak, for example. Like, we had all these cool moments, Ichigo's true Zanpakuto and everything like that, which all of that was just a spectacle to behold when you read it the first time. And it is definitely great to know that one day that these will all be animated. But I want to focus mostly on what the problems of the final arc was and how the anime could actually have a potential to rectify these issues. Now, I want to go first about the Zero Squad because this is honestly one of the um, problems that I still haven't gotten over. So, it was just a travesty the way that Kubo treated these characters in the manga. Now, I know that there are Bleach novels that are canon and explains the fate of these characters, but the mere fact that we have to go out of our way to read these instead of being directly explained in the manga is just poor storytelling. There's no way around that. We will get to that later because I also will refer to this again in another point, but there is still um, poor storytelling and let's first talk about um, before I explain why my disappointment was just immeasurably high when it comes to the Zero Squad, let's talk about the way that these um, characters were built up, like the, the hype. So let's go back to all the year when the Arankar arc was all, a while back, um, the way that they were hyping up these characters. So the mysterious Zero Squad was teased all the way back in the Arankar saga, where Aizen was the main villain at this time, and his goal was revealed by the Captain Commander, which is Yamamoto Genryu Sai at the time. He was the Captain Commander before he died in Chapter 511. So, this is the time where he told our main characters about the Soul Palace and that the Soul King is guarded by the Royal Guard. So, keep in mind that this was the time, the first time actually, that the Zero Squad had been mentioned. Now, we didn't see them yet, but it was the first time it was mentioned. Um, this is the, when they were explaining Isaac's goals to kill the Soul King. And um, at the time that the Royal Guard themselves, which is the Zero Squad, they're interchangeable. They were still considered um, mysterious entities, so we hadn't really seen what they looked like until the final arc finally arrived, so when it dropped. So when they finally showed up, their designs were unique, I guess you'd say that. So, well, what I mean by that is that they were definitely, I guess, um, after what they were hyped up, I guess we didn't really expect them to look like this, but they had mixed perceptions, so some people were a fan of their designs, um, some were disappointed, I guess, because again, it's not what they were expecting, but me personally, I was a fan of the way they looked. So, I was a fan of their design because it was actually cool to see dorky looking anime characters being complete badasses, and it was kind of a good way to send a message to not judge a book by its cover. So, um, I was definitely hyped up to see their powers as the manga and even the anime themselves stated plenty of times that the combined power of these Zero Squad members would overwhelm even the 13 Court Guard squad. So our captains, like um, the 13 Squad captains, are no match for the combined power of the Zero Squad. So, like, taking all that into account, like, wow, they had a bunch of expectations to live up to. And also when you consider the Soul King, um, is actually said to be one of the most important beings for reality to be stable. Like, as we have seen um, in the manga that once the Soul King was um, injured or killed, reality started to crumble until we had um, Captain Ukitake and plenty of other uh, the Soul Reapers to damage control. So the fact that these um, characters were meant to defend um, the um, Soul King, it shows that um, they have a lot of um, expectations to live up to because they are supposed to protect what is the most important being for these realms to stay stable. So that means it would have to be plenty powerful, okay? So that's been stated by the manga itself. So basically we um, were excited to see that um, their potential because Oetsu Nimaya, he's on screen right now, he's one of the um, Zero Squad members. 
He is the creator of the Zanfang Tso's. Created the Zanfang Tso's, like, let it sink in. Um, these are the main weapons throughout the entire series. These are the main weapons of the Soul Reapers. And we were seeing the man himself. We were seeing the man who created these weapons. That is not something to, that is not something to gloss over. So that alone puts Owetsu as one of the most important characters of the entire manga, despite him being only introduced at the final arc. So now he was destroying, let's go ahead and jump right into the chapters where the Zero Squad were fighting the um, Quincy invaders. So we had Juhabak along with the um, elite Quincy's arriving at the Soul Palace. So they were there and they were fighting the, um, I guess you'd say, the, the Zero Squad. So they were there fighting and OSU was able to display um, a immeasurable powers. Considering that these are elite members, that is very, very um, interesting. Like that is one of the most impressive feats considering he destroyed them all without, uh, I guess, less than a minute. Now, this is before Juha was able to resurrect them. But let's go ahead and talk about um, when things did turn south eventually after they got a power boost from Juha Bucks on shenanigans after reviving some of his allies. So we were still excited for more considering Oetsu and what looked like the rest of the Zero Squad had more to deliver. So when you consider that these guys are the elite, we were, ex we were excited to see even more of the potential, but how wrong we were as manga readers. Everyone was revived and then off screen. Disappointingly off screen. That's right. All that hype you were um, building up to, well, you can, you can basically show it up because that is simply the way Kubo treated these characters. That is it, yeah. Every um, potential that we got showed right up where the sun doesn't shine. That was full of crap. Now, each day, however, the main, the leader of the Zero Squad, he's exempt from this, considering the fight that he had with Juabak was probably, I'd say, one of the best fights in the entire manga. So, Ishibe and OS and Maya were pretty much the only two Zero Squad members to have decent fights. But no, what an absolute travesty. Like, you don't get to pull that crap, Kubo. Like, Piping up these characters, giving up, up, giving them all these um like statements that these guys are the strongest, these guys are the elites, and this is how you treat them? Like, come on, giving only two members out of how many are not a good way to go. Like, when you consider how important these characters are in regards to Bleach as a whole, so it was definitely a massive letdown. Now, th now as to the anime now that is coming back. They definitely have potential to rectify this. So, if I'm going to use an example, um, like let's say Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, that have filler and are able to showcase a couple fights that are apparently not in the manga. So, let's go ahead and take these into account that Bleach has potential to use these, use that filler to show some of the fights that the manga was not able to show. So. Um, in that case, the Zero Squad could definitely be portrayed better as the manga returns, which is something that I am personally excited for. This is still something that I have not been able to get over, because this is something that I have hyped for years, and um, whatever, this shit was. So, the press of Bleach anime could take advantage of this and definitely give justice to these particular moments and these characters. Now. This is not limited to Zero Squad, this also applies to other characters like Grimjo, Nell, Halibel, Yoruichi, all these, uh, even Aizen actually, to an extent. I will get into this later when I talk about the ending, so now let's go ahead and talk about the ending of Bleach. So if you recall, I actually made a video back in the summer of 2019, that's in the description below right now if you want to check out the video. And that is one where I actually ranted about the Bleach ending and why I hated it. Now my personal opinion on this ending has not changed one bit, but I will definitely tackle this topic in a more positive light, okay? So, more, most of the problems that we got are not necessarily what we did see in the ending, but more of what we did not see in the ending of Bleach. So, there were plenty of unresolved storylines that didn't even get mentioned by the final chapter, so the final chapter of Bleach was 686. Um, the, they didn't even mention plenty of um, plot threads that were left hanging. Um, like I said before, we they didn't get mentioned until Bleach novels were released, into which we would basically have to refer to these after the manga had already ended. Now, 
This is simply, like I said before, I promised I would talk about this. This is poor storytelling that we would have to rely on an external source instead of getting the answers directly from the Bleach manga itself. Like, just come on, like, get, get out of here, you know what I mean? So, now onto the positives. Ichigo's story arc, like I said before, I would take on the, I would take this on in a more positive light while still mentioning why I did like the ending. The positives are definitely Ichigo's resolution, his story arc's resolution with Orihime, and the rest of them was pretty decent, like let's say Renji and Rukia ending up together. Now, these kind of couples, everyone will have their own opinion on them if they like these couples at the end. Like some people would say Ichigo should have been with Rukia or Renji, um, and Rukia were not a good couple, I guess the chemistry wasn't good enough. But I'm not gonna get into that because that is off topic and these um, will definitely cause a shitstorm in the comments, so I'm gonna avoid that the um, couples topic. What I'm gonna go ahead and talk about is the dangling plot threads that were not given justice by the end of the manga. So let's go right into this. So if you recall right with a uh, couple chapters back before the ending, yeah that's what I mean, like since Kubo, I guess could say he either rushed the ending or this is the way he wanted to end it. Either way, it did not result in a satisfactory ending. So these chapters had fights like, let's say Urahara was um, seen in a pretty bad shape right before um, the final fight started. Along with Nelio, Yorichi, Grimjo, or even Aizen to an extent. So let's talk about Aizen in a minute, okay? We'll talk about... Um, Characters that were seemingly left for dead, like Urahara or Ukitake. Ukitake was um, mentioned again at the end. He was apparently dead after trying to um, rectify the world, after the Soul King was killed by Ichigo, who Juhabak made Ichigo kill the Soul King by controlling him, I guess. You can still, well, not control him, but more like the Quincy blood of Ichigo was what pushed him to slice the Soul King. I guess I'm trying to remember that correctly. It's been a while since I've read that particular chapter, but. We, that, anyway, that led to the events of Ukitake's death, okay? So, like I said before, we didn't really get any good fight with Ukitake. We didn't really get much despite him being hyped up as one of the most powerful captains. So, that was a massive letdown already. Like I said before, most of these plot threads were a massive letdown. Um, Urahara was seemingly in bad shape after his fight with that um, Quincy Elite. His eyes were, like, his eyes were healed by his Bankai, I think, but still, it was in pretty bad shape. And we didn't even see what happened to him after the end, during the end of Bleach. So, along with these other characters that were forgotten, so pretty much, like, half of the cast was forgotten by the time the final chapter rolled around. And, um, Aizen himself, this is the most baffling part of the final one. Aizen's Bankai, we never saw his Bankai. Now, it stands to reason that he could have faked a Bankai because, you know, Kyoka Suige, so his Shikai, has the ability to make his opponents see what they, he wants them to see. So, he could have definitely faked on um, the fact that he could have had a Bankai. But, unfortunately though, most um, some Bleach novels confirm that he did have a Bankai. So, that is something that we never saw, along with the fact that how did he even end up back in the Mukan? So, how did he end up back in the chair? So. Uh, John, let's go ahead and um, get this out of the way. Juha Baka destroyed his chair in the final fight before they fought, um, so that's definitely a different chair that Aizen is sitting in right now. But if we go back a few chapters, we can see clearly that Aizen's spiritual pressure is so incredibly high that he couldn't even be touched without that same person being incinerated. So what gives? How did how did he manage to get? Into the chair. Now, people who are strong enough are Ichigo or Juhabak, but Juhabak is definitely dying after Ichigo sliced him with the original Zangetsu, and Ichigo is definitely exhausted after fighting so much on um, battles with um, leading up to Juhabak. So, how exactly did was someone strong enough to get close to Aizen, let alone drag him back to a new chair without being incinerated? Now, I guess you could make the argument that Aizen was also exhausted after fighting Juhabak, but like I said before, these are all up for speculation because the Bleach ending is so bad it didn't even show these. So that's pretty much left up for debate as to how it happened. Now, um, hopefully, like I said before, hopefully the anime is able to showcase some of these small details before the 10-year time skip and definitely resolve some dangling plot threads that were left hanging by the time the final chapter rolled around. So, um, to recap this section of the video, 
um, the ending itself was the um, problems were not what we got, but rather what we did not get. Okay, so all these um chat, all these stuff are um not in negative. Like Ichigo being married to Orihime, or each uh what else we had um Isaac being back in a chair is not in negative. It was just the fact that we didn't see how that happened. So. It is just frustrating, even the Zero Squad, we didn't really see what happened to them, it was only explained in a novel, which again, released after the manga already ended, which just amounts to more poor storytelling. So let's go ahead and wrap this up with the final section of the video, and that is talking about pacing. Now this is, uh, this is going to be up to personal opinion, but I have read plenty of complaints about the pacing of the final saga, specifically near the middle and end. Um, I honestly thought the, um, the strongest part of the final arc was the first part. So that is the time when um, the Quincy's first made the presence known to the Soul Society, Yamamoto being killed, along with the Bankai's being stolen, and all of that was just an amazing spectacle to read. Um, stakes were at an all-time high ever since the final parts of the Ranker arc. Ichigo's despair especially was portrayed incredibly well, so I don't think most of the problems that people are talking about refer to the first parts of the saga. It is definitely referring to the middle and the ending, where pacing is starting to suffer around this particular part. Now, um, let's go ahead and talk about some of these complaints as the arc near this conclusion. The fight scenes either being dragged out or being uninteresting. Now, this is something that can definitely be more exciting to watch in live action. Which um, is not, that's why there's not really too much to say about the section, but I do agree with some of these people's um, sentiments, like the final fight with Ichigo, Ishida, Aizen, all against Yuaba, and even Hashbal's final fight with Ishida, and Baz V against Hashbal as well. All of that could have been done better, and I know Kubo could have done better. If you look at the um, Kubo's past um, record in Bleach itself, he has done far better fights than this. So I'm sure definitely if Kubo um, didn't, I guess, like I said before, we don't, I'm not really sure whether he was rushed or if he just wanted to conclude it due to his declining health. Either way, he could have definitely done much better given the time and good circumstance. So whether he was sick or rushed the manga for whatever reason, the sentiment remains the same. The pacing suffered around this time. So hopefully the anime is able to rectify these um, moments and truly bring out the potential that was lost in this, okay? So, the pacing section is not too long, but that's gonna be summed up. Hopefully the anime is able to rectify this and showcase its true potential. So with that being said, there's definitely a lot to look forward to with the Bleach anime coming back, and now that the long-awaited, um, the long-awaited hiatus is finally over, that's good, um, for Bleach fans and anime fans in general, if you're a fan of the Bleach manga. Comment down below what you think about the Bleach anime and your opinions on them on them as well, and also the opinions of the ending of the manga, and also what you personally thought about my points that I brought up in the video. So hopefully I will also be able to answer some of your questions depending on my schedule. Raphael out, and hopefully the Bleach anime delivers.